welcome back to Doodling Through Education. We are on CC Cycle 3, Week 5, Science. And that means we are going to talk about our senses. So, why are our senses important? We will talk about that. We will also talk about how many senses there are and what each of them help us do. But before we get started, I wanted to go ahead and remind you, if you have not already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode of Doodling Through Education. I also had a few people reach out to me asking how they could support this channel. Um, and so I went ahead and put a link in the description um, through the website, Buy Me A Coffee. So if you want to donate, you can do so there. Without further ado, let's Start doodling. The first thing we need to define is what are senses? Well, senses allow us to observe and understand the world, which is God's beautiful creation and everything all around us. There are five main senses that we can do this with, and they include sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. So let's look at these different senses more in depth. The first sense in our list is sight. We use this sense all the time, whether we are watching TV or perhaps looking for a toy or even playing hide and seek with your friends. Our sense of sight helps us to see the world around us. It is also arguably one of the most important senses we have. Our sense of sight keeps us safe. An example of this is by looking both ways when we are about to cross the street or perhaps looking through tall grass to make sure there are no snakes or even looking at our food to make sure we know what we're eating and that we know it is edible. If you look at your eye, you will notice three parts. First is the sclera. The sclera is that white part of your eye. Then you'll also notice the iris. The iris is the part of the eye that tends to be a different color in every person. The colors can range from a dark brown to green or even blue. The iris works as a muscle to make your pupil get big or small. So what is a pupil? Well, a pupil is that black dot in the middle of your eye. When the pupil gets bigger, this is called dilation and this happens in the dark to allow more light in. When your pupil gets smaller, it is called constriction, and this happens in bright light so that the light does not hurt your eyes. It only allows a certain amount in. If a person does not have their sense of sight, we say that they are blind. Blind people can still live a fulfilling life, but may need some help from a caregiver or a relative or even a seeing eye dog that helps lead them when they go places to keep them safe. The second sense that we have is hearing. Hearing is the ability to detect sounds that are happening around us. If you look in the mirror and you see your ear, you see the outer part of your ear. This is called the pinna. It is the first step in your hearing. It directs sound down toward the eardrum. Sound that passes through the eardrum is detected by the inner ear and transmitted to the brain. The inner ear not only helps you hear, but it also helps you keep balance. If a person does not have their sense of hearing, we say that that person is deaf or hard of hearing. These people typically communicate using what is called sign language, 
which is a language that people use to communicate with their hands. Deaf people, like blind people, can have very fulfilling lives with only some minor changes made to adapt to their daily lives. The third sense that we have is taste. Taste buds, or those little bumps that are called papillae, are all over your tongue, and they are the main sensory receptors for taste. Each one of those little taste buds have these tiny, tiny microscopic hairs called microvilli. Those tiny hairs send messages to your brain about how something tastes. There are four main tastes. Sweet, sour, bitter, or salty. A fifth taste is now widely accepted and that would be the savory taste. The average person actually has about 10,000 taste buds on their tongue. And a young person's taste buds are replaced every two weeks or so. As a person ages, some of those taste cells don't actually get replaced. So an older person may only have about 5,000 working taste buds. That's why certain foods may taste stronger to you than they do to adults. This is also why perhaps different people have different preferences in food. Let's move on to our sense of smell. Whenever we smell something, our nose and brain work together to make sense of hundreds of the very tiny invisible particles, which are known as molecules, that are floating in the air. If we breathe in sharply or sniff, more of these molecules can reach the roof of our nostrils and it is easier for us to smell them. These very sensitive receptors in our nose can actually tell what 10,000 different smells are. When these molecules make it up to our nostrils, the receptors in our nose send messages to our brain about the smell, telling us if we think it smells good or if it smells bad. This sense of smell can help you to understand your world. And this sense can also help keep you safe. If you smell your food and it smells rotten, then we know we can't eat it. Or if you smell in your house that it smells like smoke, you would know that there could be a fire. It does more than keep us safe though. It also lets us know if we think something is going to taste really yummy, really bad, or even really spicy. When you have a cold and your nose is all stuffy, you might notice that your food doesn't have much flavor. That's because that upper part of your nose that receives the chemicals isn't clear and cannot trigger those nerves to tell what you're smelling. So in that way, the sense of taste and the sense of smell are closely linked together. Our last sense is our sense of touch. This sense actually comes from the very bottom layer of our skin, which is called the dermis. Your dermis has millions of nerve endings, which tell your brain information about the objects, temperatures, textures, etc. that come into contact with your body. When you touch something, these small impulses send information to your brain to tell you whether you are touching something hot or cold, rough or smooth, or even something sticky. Certain parts of your body have more nerve endings in them. Places like your lips and face and fingertips have more nerve endings than places like your leg or your arm or your shoulder. 
And because of that, the places with the extra nerve endings tend to be more sensitive to touch. And that is all we have for today. As I always encourage you to do, go home, talk to your family, maybe talk to your friends on your community day, and talk about your five senses, how you perceive God's wonderful creation. Um, look at something in the room, for example, my desk. What senses would I use to perceive my desk? I use my sense of sight to perceive this desk. I can use my sense of touch. It feels smooth, um, but I probably would not use my sense of taste or my sense of smell. So do the same um, with items in your home and decide which of your five senses you use to perceive that object, food, or toy, anything. And on that note, let's wrap up for today. Remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care.